Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about a Toyota Celica that I wouldn't buy. Yes, Scotty's saying he wouldn't buy this. It's a 2000 Celica GTS. Now why wouldn't I buy it? Because it looks weird? No, it looks fine. Because it doesn't handle well? No, it handles perfectly fine. Because it isn't fast enough? No, it's got 75 more horsepower than my old Celica that's a 94. The reason I wouldn't buy it is because of what's under the hood. The engine. This baby has a 2ZZGE engine designed by Yamaha. Now it is a special engine. Read the VVTL slash I. It's a variable valve engine, but it also has variable lift. It isn't just VVT, it's got variable lift too. So when you get to higher RPMs, it's got a pin system and it kicks into a cam that has higher lift. So it's got insane horsepower once you rev it up. In terms of horsepower, it's 75 more horsepower than my older Celica but that horsepower comes at a price. It's a Yamaha designed engine. If you remember back in the day, Ford had a V6 one. They called it the Show, S-H-O. And that one was even completely made by Yamaha. This was designed in conjunction with Toyota. But the Ford Show was actually a Yamaha engine made in Japan. And it too put out a lot of horsepower, but just like this Toyota, they had problems. The engines broke down a lot and were super expensive to repair. Every single customer of mine with one of these Celicas that's got the 2ZZ engine in it are on either their second or their third engines. They just don't hold up. Look at this baby, it's got 111,000 miles on it and it's on its second engine. Well my old 94 Celica has 239,000 miles. And guess what, it's still on its original engine. And strangely enough, they're both 1.8 liter engines. But this old one is pretty much bulletproof. Where the one in the 2000 Celica is anything but bulletproof. They're both 1.8 liters. But this thing, hey, it's an aluminum block, aluminum head has the fancy VVT and valve list system in it. So it can put out a lot of horsepower at high RPMs. Now I know for a fact that some of my customers just over rev the thing. Sometimes they'd miss a shift, they'd over rev, and that's how they blew the engines. But there was also a design flaw with the oil pump in these things. From what I've discovered, the oil pumps can fail, then of course you get no oil at the top of the engine and it locks up. And from what engineers have told me, they didn't design the oil pan assembly correctly either. So when you're cornering fast at high RPMs, all the oil could go to one side, then the pump would suck air, that's called cavitation. You wouldn't get any oil pressure and the engine would go boom. So the big selling point of Toyotas, having bulletproof engines, wasn't the case with these engines. Yeah, they were fast, they were zippy. They wanted a car that could really zing along. They weren't all that expensive. Kids could buy them. I knew guys that were grocery baggers at the grocery store that bought some of these things back in the day. But the stock engines in them, they just didn't hold up. Now I realize there's a lot of modifications that can be done to them. I mean, this kind of engine modified slightly is what they use in some of the Lotuses. You can get a lot of horsepower. I've seen some of these things that put out hey, close to four or five hundred horsepower, but in their original design, they just didn't hold up. Now, these engines were only produced from 99 to 2006. They moved on, and they pretty much perfected the engine design itself. Take this 2007 Matrix. It's got the same basic engine design, and it's been bulletproof, but the original engine design, like in this 2000, those two ZZ engines, just were not dependable over time. And this isn't just a one-off fluke, as I said. Every single customer of mine that bought one of these, the car was either on its second or its third engine. So it's no surprise to me that the last Celica made was a 2006. That engine, as far as I'm concerned, led to the demise of the Toyota Celica. When you have a company that's legendary for cars that run forever with little problems and the engines were blowing up, that made the death knell for the Toyota Celica. Basically, they tried to do too much with too little. Yeah, my 94, it's not a race car. And now it top speed's 110 miles an hour, but it will run forever if you take care of it. They tried to go too high with a new design that Yamaha basically designed, really it was a failure. And yeah, eventually it led to a better design like those Matrix engines. They're pretty bulletproof if you take care of them. I see them with three, 400,000 miles on it. But you do not want to buy one of these 99 to 2006 Celicas that have the 2ZZ engine because they are just totally 
not dependable engines, especially if you drive them hard. And let's face it, most guys drive them hard with that variable valve lift. That doesn't kick in until you get it to higher RPMs. So you have to rev it up to get good acceleration, and that's when the engines are at their weakest. And with this new engine design, it had high compression pistons. They were 11 and a half to 1 compression ratio. It really requires high test gas. Many people with Toyotas are used to running just plain old pump gas. If you did, they would not run right, and they would have a tendency of carboning up too. Here's the thing, a modern car, sure, it can run any kind of gas because they have computer controls that can control all kinds of stuff. But this thing back in 2000, hey, it doesn't have all that stuff on it. So you really had to run it with premium gas. A lot of people didn't, so then they had a sour taste in their mouth. They didn't have the acceleration that they should have had. They'd carbon up. It was just kind of a mistake, if you ask me, putting this engine in this car. Hey, the maximum power output on this thing came at over 6,000 RPMs, so you're revving up real high, and if you're not using the right gas and your engine carbons up, Hey, that's a recipe for disaster. So now, surprise, surprise, you know a Toyota Celica that Scotty wouldn't buy, and I wouldn't advise anyone else to buy it either. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.